Next, uh, to Haiti, where gang violence has have left at least 89 people dead. The unrest erupted between two rival factions in the capital, Port-au-Prince, a week ago. Now, the city's police say they've been unable to intervene because of a lack of resources. Well, for the latest, let's speak to our Haiti correspondent, Amélie Baron, who's on the line for us now. Amélie, um, what more do we know about this spate of attacks in Port-au-Prince? Well, as you said, the attack by one coalition of gang on the territory of the other of their rivals began very early last Thursday, on the July 7th. And since then, in Cité Soleil, there has been regular shooting from heavy automatic weapons. There has been little to no respite for the thousands of families who live in this very poor area of port prince All those people have no choice but to stay in their home without being able to get water or food. Um, the Haitian organization called the National Network for the Defense of Human Rights gave a first assessment of these violences. As you said, we are talking about at least 89 people killed, 74 uh, injured, and 16 others are missing. The majority of the victims are believed to be gang members, but some civilians, local residents, are unfortunately also hit by stray bullets, sometimes even inside the home. They are really modest, and so they are mostly made with uh, thin metal sheets. Um, to add to this nightmare also, gangs do not allow ambulances to circulate freely to evacuate the wounded. Uh, the NGO Doctor Without Borders uh, runs an hospital near the zone, and they haven't been able to operate as planned. Uh, from the little they saw, they speak of the area as a real battlefield with dead bodies along the road. Some were burned. Uh, this battlefield, to be known, uh, is deeply strategic because that's where is located the oil uh, terminate, which supplies the whole capital and the north of the country. So today, activities are slowly shining starting again, but no tank trucks were able to get out of it for the whole week. Amelie Baron, our Haiti correspondent. Thanks very much.